He'll have mercy on you if you repent genuinely. But if you don't repent, can you imagine your payday? Everything you do to people to try to destroy them, it will backfire on you. You always fail to, we always fail to remember that. This Bible teaches whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today on Shekinah. I hope you had a great week with your family. And we are going to come in agreement for the word now. But before that, I just have a birthday greeting. My lovely niece, Sherry, I would like to wish you a very, very, very happy birthday. May God bless you, Sher, and we love you lots. And may God grant to you a year of great, great, Great blessings in every area. Health, strength, grace for the journey, everything. You're a beautiful person, and may God richly bless you, Cher. And we love you. Happy, happy birthday. God bless you. We're going to come in agreement right now. Father God, today we give you praise. And we worship you. We thank you for the goodness of Almighty God. And as we join our hearts in agreement right now for the service, mighty God, for this message, we are asking you, please, in Jesus' mighty name. My God, I, I pray that you will anoint your people's ears, their hearts, their understanding. Anoint them in Jesus' mighty name. And as they hear the word of God, they, they will be doers of the word. And I pray, God, that there are many, many that don't, do not believe that there is a heaven or there is a hell. And in Jesus' mighty name, I curse the wickedness of the devil and all his lies. Satan is a liar, and he is the father of lies. And Father God, he is so deceiving. He is a deceiver. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And all he wants is to keep people in spiritual blindness so that they, can, so they, they would know and understand that in Jesus' mighty name, he wants to keep them in spiritual blindness because he doesn't want them to have the understanding that there is a hell and there is a heaven. And mighty God, I pray that all this deception will stop and people will get a Bible in their home. My God, if they don't have one, they should go and buy one. And mighty God, in the name of Jesus, buy the King James Version or mighty God, there are so many different, different versions and that is okay. But God, in Jesus' name, help people to get the word of God in them. Because without the word, there is no knowledge. Mighty God, you said in, in, in your word in Hosea, your people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. And mighty God, only the word of God can help us. Only the word of God, my God, will declare in Jesus' mighty name, my God, what is and what isn't. And Father God, to go to heaven, we have to live our lives according to the scripture. For the devil is a liar, and he's like a roaring lion, going about seeking who he can devour and destroy. My God, I pray even right now that you will quicken people 
quicken them to get a Bible in their home. Father God, they must stop looking at foolishness. Stop being on the internet and, and mighty God going through what witchcraft and, 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 and mighty God what, what they have to say about tarot cards and, and my God Satanism and my God people are so ignorant it's not funny. My, my God they look around and they can see your signature mighty God in Jesus mighty name. They can see your signature in creation yet they wonder about foolish and mighty God they bow down even to idols that can't see or talk or hear my God this spirit of idolatry I pray that their God you will tear down the high places in people's life and mighty God humble them under the mighty hand of God that they can seek truth they will know the truth and the truth can set them free my God, in the name of Jesus, today just quicken your people and you help them, oh God. If they don't get in the word for themselves, they will have to continue in the lack of knowledge. My God, where, where come, this, where, whereby destruction is, would, would be evident. My God, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray, God, that in the name of Jesus, help your people not to be destroyed. Then you have these foolish Christians running all over the place mighty God giving up now in these last days in this final hour when they should be in the word when they should be in prayer when they should be repenting making their hearts right with God in Jesus mighty name they are all over the place leaving the faith mighty God going my God satisfying the lust of their flesh mighty God in the name of of Jesus people growing weary and tired in Jesus mighty name people are under peer pressure and they cannot deal with stuff so what they do they withdraw Nobody wants to attend a prayer meeting anymore. Mighty God, nobody wants Bible study. Nobody wants to hear the word. Nobody, nobody. Mighty God, every, there's only that remnant that is so hungry for God. There is only that remnant, uh, that purpose in their heart. Okay, Jesus is coming. Mighty God, in Jesus' name, the world have never been this, this way since the beginning. Mighty God, yes. In Jesus' mighty name, there was evil from day one. Mighty God from the Garden of Eden. But God, wickedness and evil have become more. Mighty God, more and more and more. And you did say in, the, in your word that evil will increase in the last days more and more. The righteous will be righteous still and the evil will be evil still. My God, may you help your people that in the name of Jesus... They're not going to be ignorant uh, of, the, of the devil's devices. Uh, mighty God, people think they live in fornication and they can go and pray and demand from God what they want. How can that work? How can we fornicate and think that all is well and it's okay to fornicate? but still pray and still have God's presence. They lies again from the devil. They're in adultery. They, 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 they do the dope and all the vaping and everything. Mighty God, they drink. They tell lies. They run around with foolishness all the time. Father God, how can they pray? How can they want God to hear? How can they want God to answer? How can they want God's presence? Then you have incest, and you have mighty God pornography. Then you have drinking. Mighty God alcohol is the name of the game with many, many. My God, they're drowned in their sorrows with alcohol. My God, my God, again, where is God in this end time? Father God, they turn their backs on you. Christians believing a lie now. They're believing, they're believing the big lie in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty God, you did say in your word again, you will send a strong delusion so that people will believe a lie. It's, uh, it's happening all over. 
Mighty God, I just praise you and thank you that you will have mercy and just quicken your people and help them to repent, get in the word for themselves. Nobody would have any excuse in Jesus' name. No one can take no one to heaven. No one can, blame, mighty God, do the blame game because salvation is this. Everyone has to work out his own Parents can't answer for children. Children cannot answer for parents. The preacher cannot answer for no one. The preacher have to preach the word, point the people to heaven, tell the people the truth, and stop the lies and the deception. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, the devil is such a liar. Father God, I just pray that you will open up the hearts of the people to want, mighty God, to search out truth until they find it. In Jesus' mighty name, they will not stop. They will pray and ask God for a divine revelation of the Messiah, and you will give it to them, and they will serve you. The devil is a murderer, and he is a murderer from the beginning. Father God, anoint me another time, and please quicken me. And in Jesus' mighty name, bless me with the divine unction and the divine utterance. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. I would like to continue now on the second part of the message. Uh, second and final part. Heaven is real. Heaven is very real. And you know, there are so many people think that heaven is a myth. It's not a myth. It's real. What we're going to do now, we're going to go to the book of Psalms. Psalms 33. Psalms 33. Praise God. And we will go to verse 6. Verse 6 and verse 13. Verse 6 and verse 13. Psalm 33. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. That means God spoke the word, and the heavens were formed. God spoke the word, the earth was formed in Jesus' name. Everything that God, that is in this world, it's God that made it all and created, created it all. So we're going to go to verse 13. The Lord looks from heaven and he beholds all the sons of men. The, word, the Lord looks from heaven and he beholds all the sons of men. Praise God. Now we're going to go now to a very interesting story with... Um, <laughs> with a very, very important person that wrote all the epistles, most of them. He wrote the epistles, thank God, and he had a mighty conversion, and he had an encounter with God. And we're going to turn now to Acts, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, and I will read. And Saul, yet breathing out, the threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest. Praise God. The high priest is Caiaphas. And Paul was the leader of the persecution when it comes to persecuting all Christians in those days. Paul was the leader. And he would have them put in prison, men, women, children, you name it. And we're going to hear a story about Saul who became Paul. So his name was Saul, but when he had the encounter with God, he had a name change. So his name changed from Saul to Paul. Praise God. Now, Caiaphas was the high priest once again. And we see, we see here 
Can you imagine? Caiaphas was a high priest. And we have seen the evil to its highest when it comes to religion. He got instructions from this high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues. Praise God. Now, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Now, we see here that the persecution led by Paul is branching out now to other cities, okay? Not just Jerusalem, it's like it's branching out. And Paul was given the instruction that these Christians, you're going to make sure you get them whether they're men or women, all right? And I believe boys and girls too. And this is what is going on with Saul. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Damascus is approximately 175 miles from Jerusalem. And suddenly, there shined round about, round about him a light from heaven. Now, note this very clearly. This is not an encounter with Satan. This was not a demonic attack. All right? This was no demonic stuff. Saul is going to now have a divine encounter with God from heaven. You know what I love about the Lord? The Lord would single out one single person. And I think the world would have now about 9 billion people. I think 9, 10 billion. And what I love about the Lord is he will single out one person if he wants to talk to you or deal with you. One single individual. And this is what I always known about God. Throughout scripture, he is so unique. He is so, so unique. I am going to detour here for a second. You have preachers right now, right? Who are preaching on television, you know. You can find them on YouTube and whatever. They're preaching that all women preachers, God never called them. They are preaching that women must stay silent. Now, I'm not preaching on women preachers. But what I'm trying to say here, I will get to a point. Now, that is the most, what should I say, hateful remark. And I call it hate. There is something about these people that they don't like about women. Now, if these people were to sit down and look at the world, there are lots of women in very, very prominent position. And they're doing well. You have women that are politicians. You have women that are lawyers and doctors. You have women that are prophetesses, may I say. How can you preach such a false doctrine? It's like, not only that, they will preach. Once saved, always saved. Where do you find that doctrine 
in the word of God. Preachers are so corrupted. They are so, they are so, I should say, they are so biased. How can you teach people once save, always save? That means when we accept Christ, right? We can do whatever we want. All of us can go to a party and drink up and sex it and dope up and do everything and it's okay. Once save, always save. The main, the main thing, you accept Christ. Now, we see from, from the beginning, Genesis to Revelation, God said to Moses, when Moses said, if you don't do this, God, blot me out your book. Blot me out the book of life. So is there a book? Can our name be blotted out? When God said to Moses, every person have to pay for their own sins. In the book of Revelation, all right, it talks about the book of life. So if you live like the devil when you accept Christ, you're doing the same things like the world, and you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, you don't have no transformation whatsoever. You're just living it up because you say a little prayer. So you think you can enter into heaven as such a pure place with all your evil and wickedness? You think that you can enter into heaven when you are misleading. There are so many false prophets that are misleading people. How do you teach Mr. Preacher, whoever you are, how do you preach that God did not call women? The church at Corinth had a problem. The women were talking while Paul was preaching. And Paul was trying to tell them, okay, keep their questions for when they go home. How can you say that God did not call women? That is like saying Jesus is coming for the bride of Christ. What is a bride? A bride in the natural, all right? When she's dressed to marry, it's a she. So then, Mr. Preacher, you shouldn't be in the bride because you're a man. Why are you so foolish and leading people astray? And you're talking so proud as though you're it. You're not it. Jesus called women and men. And he's coming for a bride which is, comp which is composed of men, women, boys, and girls. Why don't you sit down and study the word of God before you open your big mouth or stay home and shut up and stop leading people astray? Go to the word of God and check it out. In the last chapter of Revelation, this Bible teaches us, if you add to the word, the plagues of life will be on your life. If you take out from the word, the plagues of life will be in your life. Why are you not trying, you know, to understand what the word of God is saying? All we need is the Holy Spirit, not presumption, all right? Not hatred. If you have a problem with women, or you have a problem with, you know, maybe your family, you sort it out, but you can't hate women. Or when, when I say hate women, you can't go and say that God did not call people. Now I'm going to get to my point. I say all that to say this. When I was a child, all right, I was six or seven years old. It's in my book. My book is called, I Will Glory in the Cross. And that story is in that book. Satan fought the book. It doesn't even have an index, but that's okay. The message went out. That's okay. When I was six or seven years old, 
My father, he died when I was around eight, I guess. But when I was six or seven years old, you know, like, you know, attending, you know, gar kindergarten school and stuff, he would, he would take me on his shoulders and take me to school every single day. And I can remember I went home to have lunch because school was, you know, they send you home to have lunch. And I went home to have lunch. Just come from school, my mother gave me my food, and I sat down, and I ate. I was right on the veranda, a little porch, sort so you call it here a porch, and I was sitting down on the floor, and I was eating, all right? So while I was eating, now remember I'm six or seven. While I was eating, all of a sudden, I will never forget that scenario. It will never leave me. While I was eating, I got caught up. I got lifted from in front of my plate and I was taken up, and we had a tree. We had many fruit trees in our yard. My father likes to plant. And we had many fruit trees, and one of them, in Guyana, there is a fruit that you call starapple. It was a very tall tree. And I can remember very clearly, I was caught up from my plate, and I was even with this tree. Caught up right up. And I was even with this tree. When I say even, even. Now, at that point, all of a sudden, God blessed me with the wisdom of an adult. All right? He gave me the wisdom of an adult. So, what I knew God wanted is for me to remember this story all my life, so he gave me the wisdom. Now, I remember very well, I was even with this tree. Now, as, I, as, I, as I'm in, in, in the air, I was not afraid. I wasn't hurt. All right? I didn't get in, no hurt. As I was taken up, I came back down right in front of my plate. Now, the wisdom God gave me with that experience in that, me, in that few minutes, I started now to look around because I'm a six-year-old or seven-year-old. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to have that understanding and wisdom to know. I wonder if this is a wind or what. So God started to really minister at that age, right? So I'm looking around now to see if there's a wind, to see if the branches on the trees are shaking. There was nothing, no wind. The wisdom he gave me, I'm looking around to see, well, how did I go up there? And I came down, and there's not no hurt. And there was no hurt. And it's like there was one million fans that is just giving me all this wind, but all these fans are focused on me. I'm just describing the way it felt. So all these fans are focused on me. The wind. The wind. And that same wind that is coming from these fans. That's the only way I can describe it. That wind took me up and it brought me down. But it was a very, very strong wind. And it's like one million fans around me. There was not bad weather because God gave me the wisdom to look at the trees. There was nothing. And I knew that later on in years after that, I know God wanted me to remember the story. That's why he gave me the wisdom of an adult. All right? Now, right after that, when I finished eating, 
I went to my dad and I said, Papa, I went up, you know. I went up in the air and I came down back. So my father responded this way. He said, Jean, are you full? I said, yes. He said, do you wish more food? I said, no, dad, I'm full. He said, well, maybe you, maybe you eat a little too much. And he just laughed and I laughed. And after that, the whole thing, right, I went back now to my normal self. In other words, the wisdom that God had given me like an adult, oh, all is gone now. I'm normal now. All right? And that was it until I grew up. Looking back at the experience when I became a Christian and all of that, then I started to figure out, okay, this is what God did and that is what he did. So guess what? From since that day, when growing up, you know, being a Christian, like I got saved, what? When I came over to Canada, I started to realize a lot. And that experience kept coming back to me. And I would like you to know that God has called me from that day. Because of the experience I had with the Lord, the Lord said, I have called you from that experience. So maybe that is why he gave me the wisdom as, as an adult to remember the story. How can you say that God never called a woman? You are weird. Stop leading people astray. And you get your theology right because the Lord is going to deal with you. Look at the women in scripture. Look at Esther. Look at Naomi. Look at Ruth. And Priscilla and Aquila and all. The, look at Mary Magdalene, the first evangelist who went with the news to the disciples. He is risen. And then the call. I can, everything was stages. And I answered that call. And over 34 years of great, 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 great suffering and persecution, I stand here today and declare that God is real. Had it not been for the call, I would have been dead. So you better stop your nonsense. God has called many women, many, many. People like Catherine Coleman, a ministry of healing and deliverance. What do you say about that woman? God didn't call her. So under whose name she did what she did? Why are you so foolish? If something is wrong with your brain, you better check it out. But don't go and open your mouth and come against scripture. You're not coming against women. You're coming against the word of God. And you're presum some presumptuously saying that if God called women, they never heard anything. It's from the devil. What's wrong with you? Listen. If you had bad experiences with women, that's nobody's fault. That's yours. But you better get your theology right and go repent before a holy God. In heaven, there is no gender. There is no male nor female. So you better watch it. Now, I will continue. Heaven is real. Now, Paul is, and as he journeyed, this is verse 3, he came near Damascus, like I said, it's, it's about 175 miles from Jerusalem. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Heaven is real. And he is going to have a divine encounter because of sitting under the high priest. All of those hypocrites, that's what you call them, all hypocrites, 
persecuting Christian. You're a high priest, and that's the orders you're going to give to go get men and women and bung them and bring them to Jerusalem? Then you're going to put them in prison and treat them like trash? No matter what you do, Jesus reigns supreme. And he is God and he will always be God. He is the son of the most high God. And there is the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Do what you want. You can't change God's word. This word is forever settled in heaven and in earth. Okay? Now, here is the appearance of Jesus Christ in glory in the heavens. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Remember, Saul had a name changed to Paul. So anytime you hear Saul or Paul, it's the same one person. Why do you persecute me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. Now watch this. He had that visitation from heaven. And the first thing the Lord made known to Paul, to Saul, is. You're touching those Christians, Saul? You are touching me. Now, you Christians, even you, you ungodly people, do not touch God's children. Don't touch them. I'm going to tell you why you should not touch them. When you touch God's children, you are touching God's eyeballs. You cannot get off light. Don't touch God's people. You see, you Satanists and, you know, all your warlocks and witches out there, you trying to harm and hurt God's people and the church? Can you imagine what awaits you? Because what you sow, you have to reap. Payday is a must. You can repent all you want. God will have mercy, and that's a good thing. He'll have mercy on you if you repent genuinely. But if you don't repent, can you imagine your payday? Everything you do to people to try to destroy them, it will backfire on you. You always fail to, we always fail to remember that. This Bible teaches, whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. Praise the Lord. And the Lord said to Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, listen what Saul, listen what he said. And Saul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Praise God. He was so astounded that maybe at this point, God called this man by name, one man in the whole earth. Look at the uniqueness of God. Call him by name. He was so astounded. He said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And you can rightly say, this is the moment that constitutes Paul's salvation, Saul's salvation. Because all he knew was to do evil at the high priest. Command. That's all he knew. 
Now you tell me, there is not a heaven? Is not God real? Does God love people no matter how wicked they are? The answer is yes. The Lord loves us all, but he hates our evil and wickedness. He hates sin because he's so holy, he can't stand sin. He's so pure, he can't stand sin. The devil is a liar. And the Lord said unto him, verse 6, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told you what to do. In other words, this proclaims the plan of God for Saul's life. God has a plan in as much as all the wrong things that Saul did. He had a plan. He had a purpose. And this divine encounter is going to now straighten this man out from persecuting Christians to a powerful man of God. In Jesus' name. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. The people that were with Paul, they heard the voice of the Lord that spoke to Paul from heaven. But they did not see no, no one. They heard the voice of the Lord. They all were very much aware that something was really happening around them. But they did not know really how exactly what. Praise God. But Paul saw the man, and that man was Christ. He saw Jesus. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. It seems as though Paul's eyes would have been blinded by the glory of God because the light was so, sh the light, I mean, it was it was so, 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 it was so real. It was a powerful light. This is not light bulbs or a light from the sun. No, no, no. This was the glory of God. He saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Here is the champion of the persecutors, now led like the blind man he temporarily is. Watch this. Stop coming against God's children. What you sow, you would reap. Paul is blind, maybe for about three days, whatever. You don't know what can happen to you. Think. Leave God's children alone. You have nothing good to say or do. Then shut up and stop doing your evil because this God is seeing you. He's watching. And he was three days without sight. Here it is. Three days. And this is in a physical sense. And neither he did eat or drink. So Saul is fasting for three days and three nights. 
And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prays. I love this verse. Arise and go to the street called Straight. In other words, Saul was living a very crooked life. And now God is going to straighten him out. And he even put him on a street called straight. The ways of the Lord is a straight and narrow road. The way of destruction, which is the way of hell and Satan, is a broad road. And it leads to destruction. But the straight road is narrow. And it leads to life eternal. There is a heaven that is real. And there is a hell that is real. You have to make your choice. No one can do that for you. And don't ever sit back and say this. I hear it all the time. Oh, God going to get me whenever he's ready. No, no, no. He paid the price on the cross already. And he's not going back on the cross. The work is finished. Right now, he not only died on the cross, he rose from the dead. And he's seated at the right hand of his father, making intercession for us. So I would like you to know that in the name of Jesus, God will not force his will on anybody. You have to want him. You can sit down and wait and say, I'm waiting on God. If you don't make the move, he will not make the move. The Spirit of God many times is convicting many of you and you keep hardening your heart. Unless you humble yourself and fall at the feet of the cross, you will burn in a burning hell. And the, the fire won't consume you. It will torture you. That's what you want? How foolish can we get or be? Thank you, Jesus. So you can continue to read this story for yourself. All right? And you will see how Saul's name was changed to Paul. You will see for yourself that God sent Ananias to pray for Saul, and then he got his sight restored. And ministry started right away. Praise the Lord. So God can take a life and transform that life for his honor and his glory. But what I love about this story God did not visit Saul in a dream. He had a divine encounter on the Damascus Road from heaven. You talk about direct. You talk about instantaneous. That's it. One, two, three. And this man was converted. And when I tell you, a powerful man of God went through a lot as a Christian, as a servant of God, as a preacher. He went through a lot. But Paul said these words, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. 
when he was about to die. And for the sake of Christ, he was beheaded. Heaven is real. It's very real. All right? So we're going to go now to Revelation. I'm about to close. Revelation. The book of Revelation. And we'll go to verse... Chapter, chapter 21. Chapter 21. Oh, no, I have something else to read from the book of Acts. So you keep that. Let's go, to, let's go down to Acts chapter 17, and we will go from verse 22. And I will read something to you. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens... I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship and declare I unto you. The same Paul is converted and he's preaching now the gospel all over. And he's saying, this inscription he saw to the unknown God that you ignorantly worship. Are you going to bow down to idols? It's ignorance. God who made the world and all things therein, that he is Lord of what? Heaven and earth. Paul made it clear. God who made the world that he is Lord of heaven and earth, and he do not dwell in temples made with hands. You bowing down to gods that are made with hands? That is not, that is so dumb, it's so stupid. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. God doesn't need nothing. You can put all the fruits and food by, at the altar and all the wine and all the, 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 the stuff, the meat. God ain't hungry. He made everything. So what you're feeding, a dumb idol? Silly. As though he needed anything. 25. Seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things, and has made of one blood all nations from, of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bonds of their habitation and they should seek, that they should seek the Lord if haply they might, they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are, we are also his offspring. Praise God. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. The times of this ignorance, and the times of this ignorance, Paul called it all ignorance, God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given us assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear you again of this matter. Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed among the, among the which was Dionysus and the Aropagite, and a woman named Demarius, and others with them. Praise the Lord. What's the point of all this reading? There's a heaven. There's an earth. God is real. God can transform a life. Paul is saying, do not bow down to idols. Do not worship idols. 
They can't see, they can't hear, they can't talk. What are you doing? Praise God. Now we'll go to Revelation 22. And I'm about over, about finished. Now, if you want to read a lot about heaven, of course, you read Revelation 21 in your spare time. But let's go to Revelation 22 from 1 to 7. And he showed me a pure river of water. Revelation 22, 1 to 7. A pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, had on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bear twelve manner of fruits and yielded a fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. All talking about heaven. And his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Praise God. For the Lord, you can continue to read, and he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent the, his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Now, if you continue to read the word, you know, all of 22, all of 21, 21, you will see the materials that heaven is made of. All right? In Revelation 22, you will see there how you can't add to the word or take away or else your name will be blotted out of the book of life. There is a book. There is a book of life. There's no doctrine in this Bible that says, nothing in this word that says, once saved, always saved. You can't like, live like the devil and make heaven. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And both are real. Let's pray. Pray after me. Loving Heavenly Father, I do not want to burn in hell. Heaven is there for all of us, but we have to want it. And Lord, help me to know I have to work out my own salvation in fear and trembling. And I ask you, dear Lord, to please forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart as I receive you and accept you as my Lord and Savior. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Help me to read my Bible, pray, find a Bible-believing church that preaches the truth in Jesus' name. To you Christians, you have gone from the faith I would like you to know it is time that you return to God and quickly. It is time that you get things straightened out. You want to make heaven renew your covenant with God. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I have gone from the faith. I have drifted. I went astray. But dear Jesus, I am sorry. As a child of God, you said in your word, you're married to the backslider. And now, I return to you with all my heart. Forgive me for going astray. And now, I return to you, dear God, like the prodigal. And it's in Jesus' name. I'm trusting you now by faith to walk the walk, to talk the talk, and to live the life. For there is a book of life. And I pray God. That my name will be in that book. And not be blotted out. No more. In Jesus name. You are a forgiving and a merciful God. 
Just help me now to win souls and to lead many to Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God richly bless you and we love you.